What is going on and welcome to another episode of the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. I'm Ramsey Abushala, editor of urbanpitch.com. As always, to my right, the director of Vibes himself, Julio Monterosa. Julio, what's going on, man? We are here vibing today. We have a special guest. Yeah, we're filming on a Monday today. We usually film on Fridays. So, I mean, things are a little bit slower today, but, you know, we're bringing the vibes on on a Monday evening. Uh, we do have a special guest, like you said, another NWSL pro. We out here. Yeah, we're we out here. <laughs> hey, I mean, they heard about the Urban Pitch Boost, and and the, you know, you so, know what I mean. We'll we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, without further ado, from the Chicago Red Stars, we got Sam Fisher. Sam, what is going on? Thanks for joining the show. Hello, hello. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's, I mean, once again, thank you for coming on. Um, so we're 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 based in LA. We're we're here in Los Angeles. Um, you know, I've seen that. Uh, you're, you're from Simi Valley. Uh, shout out to the 805. I went to I went to college out in Thousand Oaks, so I know the area a, a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the real question is, though, um, do you tell people you're from LA, or do you, do you do you stay true to Simi Valley? <laughs> I say I'm from LA, and then they always say, "Oh, what part?" And I go, "Oh, Simi Valley." Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so she's out here claiming LA. So so okay, the valley's so, not LA. Uh, so so uh, <laughs> this is an ongoing debate. I'm from the San Fernando Valley originally, and mm-hmm. Julio is from LA, more LA proper. He's you know right right here in South uh, Central, yeah, like South it. Central LA. So he likes to be a little bit elitist <laughs> when it comes to who can claim LA and who can't. So he's he's a big. He's a big believer in the valley is not LA. So when I say the valley, I mean the San Fernando Valley. So Simi Valley is even further out than than uh, San, than San Fernando that Valley. Is so true. so I mean it's like one exit over. <laughs> That's like the South Valley. Did you grow up riding horses? <laughs> I'm in the Simi Valley, and I've been driving around next to a horse. Next to me. No horses, not that I know. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, talk about Simi a little bit. You went to you went to Grace Brethren. Um, you know, it's it's a smaller high school, but they do have it's it's a pretty powerhouse. Uh, uh, you know, whether it's football, basketball, soccer, they they they're they're continuing to churn out some athletic um, you know talent. What was that like um, in in Grace Brethren, and, and how did that uh, prepare you for for college and the, and the next steps above that? Yeah, so. Grace Brethren was a very, very small, like no one really knew about it, private school in Simi Valley. Um, I have two older sisters. One went to Royal High School and one went to Simi High School, uh, which are like the two big public right, schools right. in um, Simi Valley. And so my parents just kind of wanted to try something new um, and they wanted me to focus on my academics. And so they sent me to private school. I went there from seventh grade all the way through until um, I graduated. And yeah, at the time they were not known for their sports at all. Um, I actually knew the high, the high school soccer coach at the time, just from growing up and just the soccer world. So he was really excited that I was going to be there. Um, and I was too. And then probably when freshman year started, um, my grade actually had a lot of athletes just come, come mm-hmm. in. And I feel like that's when we kind of turned the, um, sports program around and we started we won two okay well my freshman year was a bit rough because <laughs> for <laughs> soccer at least it's I still the transitional period right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> waiting and for draft picks <laughs> yeah I was like one of the only kids who played um, club soccer my freshman year and um, we were playing schools like Oaks Christian yeah. so yeah. that was one game we lost 10-0 I'll never forget it <laughs> um and then I think we moved down divisions and got some more players and we ended up winning two CIF championships, um, lost my senior year, um, but made it to state three years also. And yeah, so after that, like Grace Brethren became really known for sports, especially football too. And so it was just really exciting to be a part of that. Yeah. So, so was there a sibling rivalry with, with all three of you going to different high schools? Do you guys still claim, you know, I know Royals the, with the Highlanders, uh, Simi's the pioneers. You guys are the Lancers. Is there like a, a like a, a big time rivalry going between the three of you? Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in-game betting, props, and futures. 
Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B L E A V 50, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Between my sisters? Yeah. Um, not so much. I think more between my two oldest because they're closer in age. Mm. Um, so, like, I never really crossed over with them, but. I think they had a little bit of rivalry going on. Oh, in other words, they they cannot compare to you. Right, you're just a better athlete. <laughs> I was a little too far away. <laughs> did they did they play sports too? Yeah, they um they both played soccer and golf actually in college, um but so yeah they my a big family um who loves sports. <laughs> okay, yeah, I saw I saw you 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 put up a post uh, uh, or a story on Instagram that you're out on the golf course. Do you golf too? I try. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm the best. I'm not as good as my sisters, but I've always just been around it. So right. I know like the basics. Sometimes I'm pretty good and other times I'm pretty bad. So it's kind of like depends on the day. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a pretty common answer when it comes to golf. Like that's probably exactly what I would say. Like I just started golfing um, earlier this year. Uh, we've got Julio is a little bit. He's a bit of a work in progress. We've gotten oh on the course God, a couple of times. Uh, he he hit one nice shot with his five his five <laughs> out of wood. fifty shots. I had one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sucks. He hit one really good one, and he's he's been coasting off that for for the last couple months. But yeah, you got to ride those as long as you can. I yeah. remember I hit one good one. I'm so hyped, and then the next shot, I like hit it two feet in front of me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of the most frustrating things. That, yeah, they say know. it's good it's good for stress, but no, it stresses <laughs> me out. Like I'll have. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I'll have three good ones, then 70 bad ones. I'm like, what is going on? Legs starts yeah. twitching, shoulders start <laughs> twitching. I'm like, what's going on? It's intense. Yeah. So, so moving from, from Grace Brethren, uh, went on to Notre Dame. Um, what was that transition like? What was your experience like, um, you know, going from Southern California to the Midwest? Um, and how would you describe your experience um, with, with the Irish? Yeah. Um, So I knew like during the whole recruiting process, I kind of wanted to go a little bit away from home. Um, I didn't really expect myself to go halfway across the country (laughs) to South Bend, Indiana. Um, But I just remember when I like stepped foot on campus at Notre Dame, I was like, this is the place for me. Um, It's a hard feeling to like describe, but I just knew like that was gonna be my home away from home. Um, And I, I'm so happy with my decision and it was a big transition. Um, I was able to go, we had this thing called summer bridge. So I got to go the summer before like freshman year started, which yeah, which was so helpful. My whole like soccer class also got to go. So I got to meet some friends, like know where everything is on campus, uh, meet some of the older teammates. And I think that like made my transition so much more smooth. Um, but yeah, it was still a big, big jump from LA to Indiana. Yeah, any, yeah. Locals, any local schools recruited you? Um, Pepperdine was probably the closest. Um, and then, yeah, that was pretty much like the most local, I would say. Mm. Was there anywhere else that was pretty close? Or was it the second you want to, uh, you step foot at, at Notre Dame? It was, that was the one. Yeah, I would say TCU um, was up there and... University of Colorado Boulder. Yeah, these are some big time. This is like big time. Like, what were you like a three star, four star recruit? Like, what, what what's going on? I don't think they do that for soccer. <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah. Yeah. that campus in Boulder, Colorado, it's amazing. Like, my my, my oldest brother lives out there. It's a, it's an amazing campus. Mm-hmm. Like, you can see the mountains. Yeah, you see the mountains. You see everything. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know yeah. how you denied that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was a cool school to visit. So, so we'll talk about some of the, 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 the college experience, because I know, um, with, with you specifically, you had, um, you know, you were in college when COVID hit and I think that's something, um, so Julio and I, I mean, we didn't go to Notre Dame. We didn't go to, you know, big, these big power, we weren't getting recruited by big powerhouse, um, uh, schools when we were in high small school, schools. But, we didn't want to, we wanted to be humble. Yeah. You we know, wanted to stay like, local, small schools. <laughs> 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 but I mean, we both play college sports and one thing for me, um, you know, I couldn't imagine what it was like, um, not only going to school during COVID, but, um, playing sports. So how did that kind of, um, 
throw a wrench in your plans? How were you able to overcome that? And what was that overall experience like for you? Yeah, I would say it was, there's a lot of good and there was a lot of tough moments mm. um, during that. And I think, I mean, when it first happened, we like were hearing about it during spring break. It was like the week before spring break when um, COVID was first becoming a thing. And it was my junior spring. Um, so we've been grinding through spring. We had had our first like spring season game. Like our team was feeling awesome and we did really well in that game. Um, and then we went home for spring break and then they basically told us like, we're not coming back. Mm. And I mean, at the time they told us like, it could be a couple of weeks and then we'll bring, probably bring you back, something like that. And then as time went on, we were like, okay, we're not going back to campus and we all had to figure out a new plan. Um, so for that soccer wise, it was pretty tough just cause like I, as like a team, we were making such big strides, I felt like, and then to have that all come to a stop halfway through your semester was pretty tough. Um, at the time I was a captain and I was trying to figure out like how to keep the team like motivated, how to make sure our team's still making strides, even in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, so that came with a lot of challenges. Um, and then luckily when we came back to campus, we were like one of the few conferences in the East what being the ACC, um, that continued to play during fall. So I'm so thankful, thankful for that. Like, I don't know how some of these other schools like did it. Like it would just be practicing and not having any games sounded so tough. Um, so we got to play that fall not knowing like when we would finish our season, but um, we just took that fall for what it was, tried to make the most of it. And then we continued in the spring, did well. Um, and I guess in the midst of it, all the good was, I also found out that we were gonna get another year of eligibility, right. which was amazing. I had thought I was going to, I was still trying to decide if I was gonna enter the draft that year. Um, and then I got another year of eligibility and I was like, I'm staying, like right. I have to. Yeah. And so stayed and um, just try to make the most of my last last year at Notre Dame and then kind of just prepare for, for where I am now. So mm. Yeah, and and so so obviously the the you know like the plan to go pro was was it was always there. Um how hard was that decision, you know, to, to stay, stay another year at Notre Dame or, or enter the draft? And, you know, what were you hearing? You know, what were like the projections around when you were going to get picked? Um, what, what was that all like? Um, and how hard was that decision to, to, to stay for an extra year? Yeah. So when we found out that we got another year of eligibility, I pretty much decided like I was going to stay. And that was before, um, like when the normal, draft would happen right so I always knew I was going to stay that year that my last year um and then I kind of just tried focusing on this past draft so I was a little undecided if I wanted to go play abroad or stay here and play mm, okay um and I had a lot of conversations with my head coach at Notre Dame and he was like um just enter your name in the draft and like see what happens and you can always have like options going forward and then I remember during winter break, my coach started like texting me saying like, I just talked to so-and-so from like Houston, from Chicago. And then I was like, oh my goodness, this is actually like a possibility. Um, and then draft day happened. I remember seeing my name on like the projected to go first round. And so I was like, this is kind of crazy. Um, I was with my family and then uh, picks started to come in and I ended up getting picked 19th, which by Chicago. Yeah. And I talked to them that morning. Um, and I just remember thinking like, I really just kind of wanted to play in Chicago or LA or San Diego. Like that was like, that would be it. Yeah. Um, and so when Chicago picked me, I was like elated. It was an, a surreal feeling. Yeah, so so talk about that because I think um, that's obviously not a feeling that many people are are able to have the, the feeling to you know uh, see your entire dreams come true um, and and getting picked with 
to a professional team so close especially to to where you played college um when did you know that going pro would be an uh an option for you and what was it like to 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 kind of hear your name get called and and actually you know realize that this is this is going to happen uh i would say it probably became a, like a realization around my junior uh probably end of my junior season um and then I went into my senior season. I was like, oh, if I have a good year, I could probably get picked higher. Um, or, I mean, I feel like going to play overseas was always an option mm -hmm, for me mm -hmm. as well. And then hearing my name, uh, it's kind of a funny story. So we were like on this Zoom so that you could have like your reactions for when it happened. Um, but then I think the timing got off or something, it was something weird happened. So at first I didn't hear my name like at all until they were like already saying, they're like saying it and they had to like repeat it. And I was like, oh gosh. And then we heard it and then we were all excited. So it was kind of like a funny um, situation, but uh, it took a few days, I think for it to settle in that I had just gotten drafted to play professional soccer. Um, I was having like people text me who I haven't talked to in so many years. And it was like, an awesome feeling knowing that like everyone had was supporting me and um was happy for me it was just kind of such a surreal moment definitely definitely um before you even thought about putting your name in the draft what moment in college did you, did you, did you know that i can play at the next level uh i think my last season at notre dame um when i took my fifth year i I just knew I was ready. Like, it's not that I was like dominating the college game per se, but like I was ready for that next step to like continue to push myself. Um, where I feel like in college, like I still like was working hard. It wasn't like easy by any means. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. right. <laughs> but um, I felt like I was just ready for that. Ready for next a new step. challenge. For a new challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 And now, and now that you're making these adjustments um, to to that next level, what are some of the biggest um, kind of eye-opening moments where you're like, okay, like, you know, I thought I was ready, but maybe I'm not, or, you know, like you, you, you there's a certain play in practice where you're like, okay, like, yeah, I, I belong here. What was like that kind of eye-opening moment for you now that you're a professional? Oh, geez. Um, let me just say the transition to the pro game was way harder than I thought it was going <laughs> to be. So it took a long time for me to have that realization, like, oh, I can actually play with these people. Um, after being here for a couple of weeks, months almost. Um, but yeah, I, I think it kind of happened when I just started feeling myself like myself again on the field. Um, it took a while for me to build my confidence and uh, feel ready to like take people on or like turn people, things like that. Um, but once that ha started to happen, I was like, okay, I'm still a rookie and I still have so much more growth to happen here. Um, but I knew that it was possible. And so it was, it was cool. Yeah. And do they got you doing any, uh, you know, rookie duties? Are they, do, are they making you sing at a restaurant or do like carry the luggage, do, do anything like bring uh, donuts every morning? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, honestly. I mean, we, we had to carry bags in the airport, but that's just like, when we get there just to the check-in thing. So um, just the rookie specifically, or does everyone have? Not to? even. It'll just oh, so kind everyone of carries like, their own bag. It'll be like the team bags. Got it. That we have okay. to carry. Right, right, right. Um, but I think like even more, it's not just rookies, but mm -hmm. it'll probably go from like youngest to oldest. As right. to who's carrying them. There's like a hierarchy of you know like. Uh, yeah, and that's like the only thing I could think of. But, yeah, so yeah. so they're not making you do like uh, any like anything in in training camp when you first got there. Or, you didn't have to sing. Favorite song? <laughs> no, honestly. Um, there Just not non-toxic organization in Chicago. It's a, it's a great yeah, organization. That's a great environment to be in. You know, yeah, they're welcome. I mean, I'm not too upset about not going to do any of that stuff. <laughs> that's the reason I don't want to go pros because <laughs> I don't want to deal with the hazy. <laughs> that's why you didn't go pro. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the only reason. I, I could I could have made it. Through you could have. Like, yeah, if you I was like, to, no, but... no, the hazy. Yeah. I don't want to cut my hair. Like, <laughs> none of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so being with Chicago specifically, obviously, I mean, last year um, made it to the the, the NWSL final. 
um, you know, you have some top top level talent. You know, whether it's Mallory, Mallory Pugh, uh, Alyssa Nair, um, Tana Malazzo, a lot of kind of you know some of the league's um, best players. What it, what has it been like? Um, kind of learning from these players, playing alongside them, practicing with them, and, and has anyone kind of taken you under their wing and, and showing you the ropes a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite things about Chicago is that we're a very, like, veteran-heavy organization, um, and there's a lot of experience there on that team. And so I think I can look to anyone in the locker room, and they'd be off, like, they could give me the best advice, and I'd try to run with it um I so for example my two locker buddies are Morgan Bryan my or Morgan right right um and Danny Colaprico so they're two midfielders which have been in the league for for a while they they know yeah we have all like played together for Mm -hmm. so long and um I just admire the way both of them play and they've actually, they've actually gotten pretty close. Um, and those are probably two of the veterans who I feel like most took me under their wing. Um, whether they like to or not, I kind of <laughs> forced them to, but um, I feel like those two have really helped me um, develop and grow as a player already. Yeah. What's the best piece of advice that you've gotten from, from either one of them? Um, <laughs> there was one day that was really tough, um, for, I just had a bad practice and I was getting yelled at and everything. And I just remember Morgan saying like, try not to like focus on like the yelling so much as like the information that they're giving you. Um, and I feel like that's huge. Cause I feel like a lot of times when you're just hearing so much information in like a very intense way, it's kind of hard to figure out right. like what that information is mm-hmm. um so that was something that like really stuck with me of just listening to what people are saying um when they might be yelling at you <laughs> yeah right. and that's a hard part for me because ramsey yells at me all the time and sometimes yeah. i just i just shut down sometimes you just shut it out <laughs> yeah i just yeah I, I just shut down i'm like ramsey please like indoor vo- indoor tone <laughs> He just doesn't listen. <laughs> well, p- part of being a leader is knowing how to communicate <laughs> to the people. You know what I mean. So you have to find ways to effectively communicate. Because I can, I can talk to Julio, I, or I can't. You know, manage Julio the same way I manage someone else. You know what I mean. So as as we've grown together over over time, you know, I've I've found out the best way to kind of you know bring them along slowly. You have to explain things you know four or five times to them. Um, yeah. You know, you got to be a little bit patient with them. But you know, I, I think it's worked out. We've got we've built a you know a fruitful rela- relationship for the last few months I think it's, yeah. it's working yeah. it's a work in progress <laughs> therapy next week yeah yeah you know I mean it's we're all about growth here yeah <laughs> definitely definitely <laughs> so another thing we're all about we're all about vibes here um, at the Urban Pitch Podcast we don't really get into the X's and O's of everything we're all about you know the cultural side of the game you know um, what people get into outside of, of you know when they're outside of the pitch um, what are the vibes like with the Chicago Red Stars? You know, whether it's in the locker room, do you guys hang out outside, um, you know, on off days? Because um, because one thing that I think interests me is, you know, that that kind of lifestyle, that pro lifestyle, um, what mm-hmm. you're able to do with that rigorous training um, and travel schedule and um, just how the team dynamic is like when you're not training together. Yeah, I think our team has great chemistry whenever we're together um we always have a lot of fun in the locker room and we're always buzzing and we can have a conversation with anyone on the team um I also think that we all um like our alone time also Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say like we hang out a bunch outside of practice as like a big group um but I definitely have found a few people who like I can always ask them to do something and they're always down um vice versa and I think it's I'm glad that I have found those people because it's kind of like with like the pro level, it's such a hard training and you get so tired. So I feel a lot of time you just like want to go home and, and just like take a nap for the rest of the day type thing. Uh, (laughs) But it's good to have the people um, to make you do stuff outside of soccer. And I found some of those people, which has been nice for me. 
Yeah, one thing I think one of the coolest things I've seen with with Chicago is um, you guys do. Um, we actually had Katie Johnson on, who's now with San Diego, but she was with mm-hmm. Chicago for for a bit. Um, but we were talking about the kind of like the pregame runway um, that that y'all do with the you know the outfits. Um, oh yeah. Um, come so so. What do you what are your thoughts on all that? How would you describe your style? Um, uh, and <laughs> and and how, like how how much thought goes into those? Yeah. How do you start fits? a pregame fit? Yeah. Do you start off with the shirt? The shoes, the jeans. How, oh, how do you start? I don't fit? even know. I don't even know. All I know is I love it. Um, <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts about game day. <laughs> but I feel like my style changes so much. One day I'm feeling a little bit of streetwear. The next day I'm feeling like some preppy vibes. Um, but my roommate Ava Cook and I, we try as much as we can to kind of coordinate what we're gonna wear because we walk in together most okay. of the time um so it's probably not good how much we spent on those game day because <laughs> we're always like oh, I have these shoes but what shirt am I gonna wear with it and then we had to go to the store um but I mean I love it and it always I don't mind adding to my closet <laughs> oh yeah yeah impulse buys that's like the best yeah 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 who, who cares about rent <laughs> we'll figure it out later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you are are you online shopping? Are we going, you know, to the mall? Like, like going to different boutiques? Like, how does that work? Um, I'd say more of an in purse in person buyer. Um, you got to get the fit right. Yes, I like to go and see it before I buy it. Mm. Um, but that's what I like about Chicago. There's a lot of good like reseller places or like oh, okay. uh, thrift places like little boutique shops so you're always bound to find something sick um yeah i always do are you into sneakers at all too i am i i wish i had more of the ones that i like but i do like sneakers <laughs> what kind of sneakers do you like well i want to get some more like uh the y3 adidas ones okay all right yeah just saw a super cool pair from those. Um, I like my dunks. I'm oh. looking at a pair over there right now. <laughs> um, and I like my golden goose shoes. I feel like those are a classic just to have. Okay. I don't I don't I'm not familiar. Oh, those, those, those are the expensive shoes. Those are oh, the... okay. That's that's <laughs> yeah. above my above my okay yeah. grade right there. Yeah. Let's not look at those shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a once a year type yeah. of... Okay. You, you, when you when you're really trying to flex. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> game so, day game day game day yeah right for right, sure right yeah so so who are in, in your opinion who are some of the best dressed players on on the team outside of yourself of course on the team yeah um i really like ava cooks um mm-hmm. you're just saying you're just saying that because uh, roommate yeah you got <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i gotta but, live with her um, yeah right <laughs> i think tatum malazzo has some great ones yep. Oh, I was excited to see what she comes in uh, with. Um, and Danny Colaprico has some good ones. And Aaron Wright, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They always pop off. Yeah, I mean, all, all, I mean, I, that's, I mean, we talked about this before, but I mean, Angel City does it. Um, Gotham does it. I think Gotham kind of started that. Yes. Uh, last year they did that kind of whole red carpet type, type thing. Yeah. Where I, I think they, um, um, might have been the, 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 the team that popularized it. But I think you, um, Angel City, um, and Gotham are kind of like the, the, the leaders in, in, in all that. And, I, and I'm pushing, I'm making, you know, uh, a push to, to spread this across a little bit more across <laughs> the league because some teams think it's, you know, a little bit unprofessional, that's a distraction from the game. But come on, like, we're trying to see Fitz get off. We right? sent the email out. We haven't got a response yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. We're still um, waiting. Um, yeah, we're, 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 uh, Katie was talking about how San Diego is very professionally run, and you know maybe uh, that might be a little bit too, uh, you know, distracting um, in, okay. in in the minds of the front office. But you know, we sent out an email. Still waiting to hear back. I'll send. You know, I, I don't know what access denied is. That I yeah. got that. You know, instant. Uh, I don't it's know. It's a uh, wrong email or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. So I'm, I'm looking to follow. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like so, so I'm I'm still waiting. I'm I'm hopeful that they'll get back. But one day, uh, one day. Yeah, <laughs> we refresh our inbox every three seconds. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I always do enjoy, like enjoy seeing other teams' fits. Also, mm. it's always fun to look out on the Instagram. I remember going to Gotham, 
and like their red carpet was out there. I was like, oh, so this is where they do their their right. photo shoot before right. a game. So it was really cool. Does it does it get competitive with um it, like with the with the red stars? Like, the, do, do do you guys do do you feel like you know it's it's more like keeping up with so. the Joneses? No, no, I wouldn't say so. We all come in at d- different times too. So okay. some of the time I don't even see other people's fits until I look on the Instagram later oh, okay. that day. Um, and I'm always like, oh, I wish I saw them in person. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking about Angel City. How was it coming back home and playing uh, in front of your friends and family? Even though Simi Valley is not LA. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was still cool. <laughs> <laughs> so how how was it putting them through all that traffic? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, how was it? Um, you had fan, friends, family coming over. How many yeah. people? How many tickets did you have to get? <laughs> that was the funny part. We I think we get like a limited amount of tickets being the away team, right? Mm-hmm. And so the whole week I was like, Are you using your tickets? Are you using your tickets? <laughs> and I've managed to like get a pretty good amount of them um for everyone that came. But it was so cool. I was just so excited to come home, play in front of people. Um and especially at the bank too. Um I grew up going to like the LAFC game, I guess not grew up but recently went to a lot of LAFC games with my dad and so I've been to the bank um and just the fact that I was going to like be playing in the bank was right. it was just crazy to me um one of my best friends Lily Nabet is also on Angel City okay. yeah 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 shout out to Lily yeah. so I grew up playing with Lily and I was just excited to see her and um knowing that like everyone my family friends uh, some coaches that I grew up with that were going to be there. I was just so excited. And luckily I was able to get the start in that game. And I was just remember like standing in the field and just trying to take it all in right before kickoff. And it's definitely a moment I will never forget. Yeah. The atmosphere I think they brought, um, and you know, obviously we've, we've covered this a bunch on, on, on previous episodes, but, um, you know, it's just, it's a completely unique vibe. I mean, it's not even, like it's not really comparable to LAFC, um, in in terms of like you know the experience, it's completely different. So I think you know going to LAFC games is is obviously amazing. There's you know that's its own energy. But then when you go to LA or Angel City game, you know it's a completely different energy. It's you know just as vibrant and you know just as um, you know loud and stuff. But it's it's just completely like it's it's its own thing so yeah, to, different to me, that's crowds been, yeah yeah to me that's been um kind of the most eye-opening thing with 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 everything and yeah um, it was yeah. it was really cool um especially being their first year like I just think it's amazing what they've done as a club for women's soccer as a whole um especially in the NWSL I think it's inspiring a lot of the other clubs to kind of follow in their footsteps with that too mm. yeah yeah and um I think it was a few weeks ago um, you played, um, was it San Diego in, in Soldier Field? And that was, you know, a really, um, you know, uh, big time crowd. And um, just, you know, just watching it, like you could tell, like the, the energy was there. What was that like? What was that experience like playing yeah. in that crowd versus playing um, at, at the bank? What was, what were the differences? or, or Yeah, that was a super cool experience, too. I've actually never even been inside Soldier Field like that for a Bears game or anything like that before so it was really cool to step onto that field um and that was before the Angel City game obviously mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. was the biggest crowd that we have played in front of all season uh I think we were at like close to 20,000 I, I think, think it was wow. yeah, something like that maybe yeah. even a little bit more I, um, I, yeah I think I might have actually been the biggest crowd in the NWSL this season I think I think oh I, really I, I think I saw something about that yeah that yeah, was yeah. Chicago. okay yeah. <laughs> well um yeah it sure felt like it I thought the crowd was amazing here um and it was really awesome to see a lot of people come out to the game and um fortunately we didn't get the result that we wanted um, but it was still a cool experience, I think. And then comparing it to the Angel City game, um, I mean, it's an away game, right? And mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's it can be intimidating when they're all like jumping with their arms, like swinging yeah, side yeah, to side yeah. and everything like that. Um, but I think both were equally like amazing to play in front of and super cool because it just shows like the gr- growth of women's soccer, you know, so um it was awesome yeah how do you like the growth like growing up playing soccer to now um 
What do you, how do you see that growth from then to now? It's, it's been a lot. <laughs> um, I feel like I've had to focus on different things at different points in my career in order to excel on the field. Um, I think most recently has been a period of most growth, I would say. I feel like I've had to learn so much so quickly um, in these past few months. Um, but yeah, it because I would just say that was the biggest jump in level from college to professional. Um, obviously, from high school to college was a big jump as well. But college to professional was like even more than I was expecting. Um, so I just had to focus on a lot of different parts. I've had to become more of a physical type of player now in the pros. Um, had to be a lot quicker with my touches. I can't dribble as much as I used to. So I'm not that I'm a totally different player, but I just had to play a little bit differently um, with Chicago and how we want to play and everything like that. So um, it's been good. It's been kind of fun to see myself grow through the years. Yeah, we always like to ask this question, but what was that kind of like a welcome to the NWSL moment for you where, you know, it was either like a, a tackle or getting megged in practice or in a game or, or whatnot. What was that uh, kind of moment where you're like, okay, this is the, this is the truth. Um, I remember the practice exactly. Um, <laughs> it was probably one of the, maybe in the first week or so, but oh. um, I was just playing a holding mid, which was also a new position position for me. Um, I'm more of like an attacking mid slash forward player. And I was in the holding mid position. And I remember like receiving the ball, thinking I had time and someone just came running on my back, like got tackled me, got the ball and they scored. <laughs> and I was like, I swear I just had time. I, like, <laughs> I know I just checked my shoulder when the ball was coming. And so things like that, where you think you have time and you actually don't have time was like a big, big adjustment. I feel like for me, mm. um, just knowing that pressure is coming so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And taking things off the pitch a little bit, I know you had a little bit of Midwest experience, um, with, with your time at Notre Dame, but, um, moving from Southern California to, um, you know, to, to, to Indiana now to, to Chicago, what were some of the biggest kind of things you had to adjust to um, maybe off the field when it came to, you know, Midwest culture versus uh, Southern California culture? I mean, I think one of the biggest things is like the weather. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Growing up in LA, never see, well, I mean, we would go up to big bear and everything like that. So mm. not living in the snow. So college. That's like fake snow too, though. Yeah, right. it's fake snow. Yeah, that's, that's fun snow. That's yeah, like, yeah. Go snowboarding. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Snow yeah. It's like no. eighty degrees snowing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember walking the sun classes. The wind is like right in your face. Snow hitting you in the face. You have to like take breaks with, between buildings when you're walking because you're like gonna freeze. <laughs> um, yeah, those are some of the hard days. Um, and now living in Chicago, that's a totally different thing too. Just being in a city. Um, during winter is also comes with its perks and also struggles. Um, but that was probably one big thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's tough not like having the beach at your disposal or um, hiking in the mountains or things right. like that back at home. But um, there's also things here that we don't have in LA. So it's kind of, it's, it's been cool. So any advice for so-called kids going to this cold weather state? What will be the, how, how to deal with the cold? Like, do you have to start off with a puffy jacket or what's the secret? Uh, I would say just a good jacket and try to cover as much skin as you can. <laughs> and hopefully you don't have to walk too far. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's helpful, but it's like, I feel like that's like, that's like, you know, Basically. you're not, yeah, you're not gonna, like, you're gonna have to deal with this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it. there's no, yeah. there's no, Honestly, like. Honestly, it's just, like, all in your mindset. Like, I, mm. I feel like I went into it knowing, like, I'm from LA, and it's gonna be cold out there. See me, Valley. so, I just kind of, like, pretty much all through fall was, like, mentally preparing myself for it, mm. and I think it helped a little bit, um, 
but you just have to go into it knowing that's what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, because it gets 60 degrees out here, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what is going you on with this You a little breeze at 60 yeah. degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I got to go back home and put the heater on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also another cool thing. It's like you get seasons out here. Um, so now in Chicago, it's kind of, I can kind of feel it in the air starting to change into fall a little bit. Um, and then once winter ends, that's like one of the best parts. Cause now you're like, right. flowers are blooming again. It's getting warmer, right? When you can put your shorts on, that's like the happiest day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's cool. S- seasons are overrated. Seasons are overrated. <laughs> you know? Just give me summer 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, so what's your, what would you say is your favorite part of being in Chicago? I just love living in a city. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, so I'm from Simi Valley, so I guess right. not like be, I'm not living in a, mm-hmm. in a city there. Right, right. Um, but being here, like we're very close to downtown, and oh wow, like, yeah, there's just so much to do, like all the time. Especially now in summer, I feel like I've done so many cool things. Um, there's so many restaurants. I love food, so it's awesome to like have so many restaurants to choose from. Um, but yeah, being in a city, it's it's totally different vibe living. Yeah, Any you, recommendations? Let's say that's right. Ramsey yeah. and I are trying to go to Chicago. What's the one spot we? What's the one spot we have to go to? Restaurant. Yeah. Or anywhere, any place. Yeah, yeah, sure. Ooh, I I don't know how to say it. I really like Il Porcellino. It's like an okay. Italian. It's yeah. Really cute, right downtown. Um, that's really good. I always go to. Foster Beach. It's like the lakefront, the beach. Um, right. <laughs> it's the lakefront, and you just see Lake Michigan on one side, and you turn around, and it's like the skyline of the city. That's and so cool. that's a really cool spot to go to, depending on, I guess, when you're kind of visit. So if I take Ramsey there, do I have to hold his hand? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to. <laughs> All right. Hey, we've we've set boundaries, so you know, we have a healthy we have a healthy relationship, healthy, going, healthy. As, as you can tell. But real confident uh, about ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, you were talking about food. Uh, have you have you watched the Bear um, at all? The, the the TV show, the Bear. I have not. I've not. Uh, so I mean, it takes place in Chicago. Um, I think it's on. I think it's on Hulu. Um, but I just I I watched I think it's like seven or eight episodes. I watched all eight in like two days. Um, Have you but, seen any good ones that I should try? Um, so it's I I don't know if the restaurant because it's like focused around that restaurant. Oh, um, okay. like a, a like a like a chef comes to to like come back to his family mm-hmm. restaurant. Um, and so I don't even know if that's a real restaurant. I don't I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah. yeah it, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I, I recommend that if you're, if you're into it. <laughs> if it really exists, go to that place. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about the show, not the, not the restaurant. Report back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Sam, this has been awesome. Um, you know, we, we'd love to keep going on, but I know, you know, you got things going on. We got some things going on, too. But before we wrap things up, we like to finish things off with, uh, you know, just a hot seat round where Julio throws you some, some, some quick questions, puts you on the hot seat, and then we can wrap up after that. Sounds good. All right. All right. Three songs before a game. Three songs before a game? Yeah. Um, now by Young Thug. Um, okay. <laughs> Grow Street Party. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Flocka. Oh, geez, let's go. <laughs> There's a playlist to get a red card. <laughs> <laughs> That's that red card playlist right there. <laughs> and then I'll say New Level. By Ferg, ASAP Ferg. ASAP Ferg, I think. Okay, yeah. all right. I think like it's like classic, classic pregame ones. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I'm Let's gonna go. be in that locker room. It's yeah, like a party. I thought. Yeah, I thought we were gonna be like a cruise by Fort Florida Georgia Line. You know, maybe some other like kind of like <laughs> semi- this, those like the Simi Valley classics. You know what I mean? but, oh God. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thin crust or deep dish? Um, thin crust. Nice. Mm. Nice. Right answer. All right. Chicago or LA? Ooh. I can't answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw it out there. Concerts. All right. Favorite concert you've been to? Um, Hound Mouth. Hound Mouth? Hound, Hound Mouth. Mouth? Yes. All right. You got to put us. Of... You got to put us on game for that. You got to put us on game. Yeah. It's totally different than my pregame music that I okay. just said. <laughs> yeah. It's like kind of like folk 
alternative type music. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Like like some Mumford and Sons type type stuff. Exactly the same genre. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Last that. one. Uh, start one, bench one, cut one. Mia Hamm, uh, Alex Morgan, and Rapino. Ooh, okay. Um, start one. I'm going to go with Alex Morgan. I oh, feel like she's okay. on her game right now. Okay. Right. Um, bench one will be Mia Hamm. Right. That's the go. That's the go. That one will be Rapino. You know, it's it's a tough no cut. Hard no matter, feelings, no yeah, hard it's a tough feelings. it's a tough cut. No matter who you're who, who you're. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I no, thought you, thank you so much yeah. uh, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, any deep dish pizza spots in Chicago? We didn't even ask that. Yeah, I feel you got like, Lou Malnati's. I know that's real important. Gino's. Giordano's. Yep, those are yeah. the big ones. All right, now I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Take yeah. Notes. Yeah, but we were mentioning earlier. Um, we. It's been a coincidence, I think, but every oh, definitely. yeah, every guest that we've had, every pro player guest that we've had, um, you know, within it's usually a couple of weeks. Sometimes it takes longer. Daniel Stairs on Houston, uh, Houston Dynamo just scored a goal, but it's not. It's it's a coincidence if it happens a couple of times. This this has happened like four or five times where every pro guest we've had they come on the show and they score a goal. Or they win player of the week, or they win player of the match, or you know they make save of the week. Um, so okay. I mean, only good things can happen. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to take credit, but you know, you might you might see us on Instagram flexing a little bit that you know we might have added some good some good uh, karma your way. If you so, do the yeah. little uh, hurt hamstring, man, oh the little yeah, we yeah. Just know you scored because the urban pitch boost. Yeah. <laughs> Look, in that case, I'm free next week if you guys meet. <laughs> oh, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Repeat guests. Let's go. Repeat guests. <laughs> the go is coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming soon. Just know. Maybe in a few months, if it hasn't come, we can we can get you uh but we can re up. You know, I think it I think it exponentially raises, you know. Definitely, you definitely. Just let it, so you yeah, so so you know, we'll stay in touch. Maybe um, you know, in the off season we can we can um link up or do something. Yeah, too, you, know? you gotta go in front of the camera and be like urban pitch yeah and we're good yeah we're good we're good <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll probably be back in la i think for off season so i'd love to do something then for sure yeah definitely, yeah definitely. let's plan for it yeah well uh, uh, yeah ramsey's a goalie so we can have a <laughs> shoot off on Perfect. Ramsey. i can work on my shooting <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll give you confidence I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that yeah yeah i, I could use some of that too <laughs> right <laughs> okay sam fisher thank you so much for for taking the time this was a lot of fun um everybody watching at home everybody listening you know we really appreciate y'all too um keep it tapped in we're, we got some more guests coming up we got some more um you know uh, solo shows coming up too so um you know we're really excited to keep this moving sam fisher again thank you so much for joining the show for julio Monterosa, i'm ramsey Abushala. this has been the urban pitch podcast part of the belief network we'll catch you guys next time let's go <laughs>